I welcome everyone to this platform and thank you for connecting. Uh, we want to continue with the study that we started last uh, two Sundays on the theme, the blessing set of the birth, the death, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God who sits right now at the right hand of God, the right hand of power, having all authority, power, dominion over all creations of God in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah and glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. And so we started two Sundays ago and last Sunday we touched on the first blessing in that blessing set, the blessing of forgiveness of sin and deliverance from the power and nature of sin. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, I believe we were mightily blessed. Today we want to continue with number two of that set, the blessing of deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan, all his works and all his agents. That's our focus for today. Uh, for the sake of those who may be joining us for the first time, we said we're going to take the first five blessings in this blessing set. So I've mentioned two. Number three is the blessing of the Holy Spirit that God has given to mankind. Number four is the blessing of healing and indeed divine health. And number five is the blessing of sonship. We have become sons and daughters of God. This is what we'll be covering. So today we'll be covering number two. Our Father in heaven, we ask that by your spirit, you will teach us your word. Holy Spirit of God, expand expand and expound the word of God and give us understanding through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our anchor scripture, you remember, is Isaiah chapter 53. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 53 and start there to read from verse 5 all the way to 12. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Twelve. And the last verse. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Praise the name of the Lord. This prophecy about Jesus Christ all were fulfilled. So everything that was prophesied here by Isaiah came to pass 
And that is why we're talking about the blessing set. So you may know that there are guaranteed blessings already for those who are in Christ Jesus. These blessings are not selective. It's actually meant for all humankind. However, you have to come to Jesus. It is only when you have come into Jesus Christ that you become a participant, a partaker, a receiver, and an inheritor of this blessing. Of course, you know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 17. It said we are heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ Jesus. If I read it all the way from verse 16 to that 17. So we have become inheritors, partakers, uh, participant, receivers of the blessings of God. And that is what we are looking at today. So today, our focus is on blessing number two in the blessing set. And don't forget that a set is a collection of things that go together. And when you have the set, you have everything inside the set, which are called the elements of the set. So there are blessings in this set, the set, and that's why we call it the blessing set. There are blessings inside the set, and we are going to take the first five. God willing, we will take another five because there are 10 of them, guaranteed blessings that I want us to touch on. And I've told us before that there are many more. As we study this, I believe your eyes will be open to look at other blessings that are guaranteed for you already having come into Jesus Christ. So the blessing set number two, the blessing of deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan and all his works and agents. God has given us that dominion. Hallelujah. I want us to read uh, a few more scriptures and then we enter into the discussion. I want us to read Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's why we dealt with blessing number one, because that's the blessing that opens the door and brings you into these other blessings. The blessing of the forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power of sin and the nature of sin. So through the blood of Jesus, we have been forgiven. And by that, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Let me say here that there are two kingdoms that operate in the world. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is led by the devil. He is the father of darkness. And all those who are in darkness are under the rulership of the devil and there is the kingdom of light that operates in this world man is the playing field the soul of man is the playing field for these two kingdoms and the contest here is who will win the soul of man and god has given man the will to decide which kingdom you want to play in. 
Do you want to continue to play in the kingdom of darkness? Or do you want to enjoy this blessing of deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan, over the devil and all his agents and all his works, all his activities? Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has delivered us from the power of darkness. And so the Bible says it categorically here. He said, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, transferred us, translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So know that today you are in the kingdom that Jesus rules over. Even while you are here in this world, you are in the kingdom that Jesus rules over. There is a kingdom that rules over you, and that kingdom is the kingdom of light, is the kingdom of God where Jesus rules. Hallelujah. So Jesus is a ruler over that kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. God has given him all power, all authority, all dominion to rule over his kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's read another scripture so we understand our position. Let's read Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. And I hope you are writing down these scriptures because as we progress, I will merely just refer to the key points. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. Hear this. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Demons are subject to you, subject to me, in the name of Jesus. God has done it so. Verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you and I have been given authority. Jesus has given us authority. Why does he have the power to give us authority? Because all things were created by him and for him. And so he is above all. You know, Philippians 2 from verse 9, he said, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every name must bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those we need the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. In fact, in that same Colossians chapter 1, let's read it further. And you hear what the Bible says about him. Jesus Christ. In verse 15, we read 13 and 14 here. Uh, verse 15 down. He said he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. Hallelujah. For by him all things were created. That are in heaven. And that are on the earth. Visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. Whether you see it. Whether you don't see it. The demons you, you don't see, visible or invisible, all things were created by him. Hallelujah. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, are these not the things? Are these not the subjects that people are afraid of? Oh, but God has delivered you and me. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us from darkness into the marvelous light of the kingdom of the son of his law. Hallelujah. So verse 16 here continues. It says, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, hear this, all things were created through him and for him, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so that's why he has given us authority. 
Once Jesus has given you authority, the devil cannot play with that authority. Unless you don't know your authority. Unless you permit him, as we will be talking about it. In fact, since I have mentioned it, let me give it out here. The devil operates through some tricks. He operates through some principles. He operates through two principal laws, and there are others. But every other one can be rolled into these two laws. So please write it down. He operates through the law of servitude. The law of servitude. The law of servitude says that to whom you submit yourself to obey, his servant you become. The devil always plays this trick. This is what the devil uses to trick men. But Jesus Christ has destroyed him. Jesus Christ has stripped him of his power. And we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. All glory be to God. All glory be to Jesus who has given us victory over the devil and all his agents and all his works forever. Hallelujah. And you are set to be free right now. If there is any devil, any agent of darkness plaguing your life, that power is hereby destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the devil is a created being. A created being. You have seen here. He says whether visible or invisible. Whether you see him, you don't see him. God has given you victory over the devil. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. Verse 18. And he is the head of the body. Hallelujah. The church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Jesus is the head of the church. And that is why this blessing is for those who have come into Jesus Christ and have become part of him. Hallelujah. Because he becomes your head. And that's why the scripture clearly says there that we have been delivered. And I'm telling you confidently and boldly, the devil has nothing to do with one who is in Christ Jesus and that person and you and I who are in Christ Jesus, we have nothing to do with the devil. But he operates through those two laws I told you and will come and deal with it. So, having given this as an introduction, and I believe even this introduction is already enough. Hallelujah. Even this introduction has made us to know our authority, our right, and the scriptures that back it up. Let's look a little deeper. Let's look at the devil that controls darkness and all the evil. Let's know a little about the devil. Uh, time will fail us to dig into so many scriptures. We'll take two principal references that any Christian must know these two scriptures. They are Ezekiel chapter 28. Please write it down, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 16. And also Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 17. I will just read that scripture and I will establish a few things that uh, we need to know. Let me start from Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12. It said, son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God. Let me pause here because some people, when they read this, they will be confused. They say, a king of Tyre, is the devil the king of Tyre? The king of Tyre here was used to represent the devil in this prophecy. How do I know that? Listen to what follows. He says, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond. Burial onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipe was prepared for you on the day you were created. Look at 14 so you can see. He said, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you, is God speaking. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. 
You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within you and you sinned. Therefore, I, God Almighty, cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. That's why the devil is afraid of us who carried the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because he was cast out of that mist of fire. Hallelujah. Oh, that's another mystery altogether. Brethren, the mystery of God through Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit has revealed through the word of God is deep. So you carry that fire. Hallelujah. And the devil was cast out of the midst of that fire. Hey, <laughs> hey, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's make a few points here. Point number one, verses 13 and 15, you can see there that the devil was created. Point number two, he was not created devil or Satan. He was created Lucifer. He was created, he was an angel of God. God, occupying a key position, but iniquity was found in him. And that iniquity we will see in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 17 that I talked about. We'll read there quickly, but let's finish the points here. So, he became Satan and devil because iniquity was found in him. Sin was found in him. And God casts him out. And you see a number of scriptures that support that. Let's look at that Isaiah chapter 14. Now we talk about verse 12. Here verse 12. He said, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. Can you see that? And you remember Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Jesus Christ said, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I see some people at times, they will act drama. And they will be talking about the devil coming into the presence of God to be arguing about a believer, that, 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 that. I don't know where you got that from. Jesus, by his death and resurrection, has terminated every activity of the devil in the presence of God. The devil has been cut down, cast out of heaven. Jesus calls, or uh, the Bible calls him, Paul the apostle calls him in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. He said, in which you once walked, and according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience, who now walks, he was cast out of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish time would allow us to go to Ephesians chapter 1 and see that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we are seated with him. Therefore, what Colossians chapter 1 says applies to us. That we are seated there far above principalities and powers, dominion and might and every name that is named in this age and in the age to come. So, a bit about the devil is what we are talking about. That he was created... And he was created, Lucifer, but he sinned and uh, iniquity was found in him. And that iniquity is what we're looking at here. And God cast him out from mist, the midst of the fiery stone. He cannot enter there anymore. 13, he said, for you said in your heart, hear what the devil was conceiving in his heart. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. 
I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Ha ha ha. On the farther sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Hey! God said to him, devil, there cannot be two captains in this boat. And I throw you out. So he was cast out. Verse 15, I think I'll just leave it there. Yet, he said, you shall be brought down to show to the lowest depths of the pits. That is what happened. Hallelujah. Right away, let's go to Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7 to 12. So that from today, you will no more fear the devil. You have no part with the devil and the devil has no part with you. Jesus has settled it. He said, and what broke out in heaven? Michael, the archangel Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. No place for the devil and his angels. So the angels that were cast out of heaven with the devil are the ones that are demons. The agents of darkness. So you have devil, Lucifer, who was cast out who became corrupted by sin, as we, have, as we saw there in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, from verse 12 down. That's who we now call Satan and the devil. The angels that were cast out with him, the rebellious angels who joined him, because he said he will ascend, he will be like God. He will sit on his own side, and have his own kingdom, have his own dominion. And God cast him out, caught him to the earth with his angels that supported him. They are the demons. Now, and you will see what they have come to do. Verse 9, so the great dragon was cast out. Hear this, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Can you see now? Devil and Satan. Who deceives the whole world? He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The devil and Satan is one and the same person. Now, what are their duties? Quickly, you must know their duties. And that, so that you know why we have been delivered and why we must take our position and authority. Their duties, number one, is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. It says the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus has come that you should have life. And have it abundantly. Jesus has come that I should have life. So the thief that came, the devil that came to kill, to steal, and to destroy, Jesus has come. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Blessed Redeemer. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. So, the devil's duty is to steal, is to kill, is to destroy. That's number one. And you see that in John chapter 10, verse 10, as I've said. Number two, the duty of the devil is he is a murderer. He is a murderer. And you see this in John chapter 8, verse 44. He is also a liar and a deceiver. A liar and a deceiver. You see that in Revelation chapter 12 that we just read in verse 9. It says, so the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of oak called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And that was verse 9, where I stopped. But I think I should read a few more verses. But let's just take the characteristics of the devil. He keeps people in bondage and prison. He keeps people in bondage and prison. 
You will see Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15. And that Isaiah chapter 14 that we read, verse 17, C. He says, he who does not open his prison doors. Those he captures into prison, he doesn't open his prison doors. He wants to keep them in bondage permanently. But thank God that by the authority in Christ Jesus, you have been delivered and you have been given the power and authority to cast out the devil, to break that prison door. Every prison door of the devil, every bondage of the devil that he has cast you, cast your blessing, cast anyone concerning you into, anyone that is upon this platform, I command that prison door to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command that chain of bondage to be destroyed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So those are the characteristics of the devil. Uh, let me just read that verses 10 down uh, of that Revelation chapter 12. As I, I did say, we will read 7 to 12. I'll read to 12. So from verse 10, he said, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night has been cast down. Here, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How did they overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. 12, the last. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. You can see why the devil is rampaging evil all over the world. Because he has a short time. The devil is a created being. This is another point you must know. The devil is a created being. God created him, as I told you, just like he created you and me. And he is subject to the order, authority, and command of God. And God has given Jesus Christ, his son, all power and authority in heaven and on earth over all of God's creations. Hallelujah. And so Jesus has given that authority to us and has already delivered us. So it's not just that you are in a fight with the devil. No, no, no. It's that you are already in a kingdom that the devil cannot touch. But the devil uses the trick of servitude and uh, the law of provocation. Oh, I said two laws. I remember I didn't mention the two. The law of servitude and the law of provocation. Let's move because of time. Thank you, Jesus. So the characteristics of the devil we have talked about. Now, our deliverance and victory that I've just talked about. You can see that in Colossians 1, 13, 14 that we have talked about. Uh, we have read Luke chapter 10, 17 through 19. Um, but, and then Colossians, I, let's look at Colossians chapter 2, 13 to 15 as well. Before we come to these, let me just briefly talk about this law of servitude and provocation, which is the trick that the devil plays. That's the way the devil operates. He operates through the law of servitude and provocation. So the law of servitude, what does it mean? I've told you before, to whom you yield yourself servant to obey, his servant you become. So the devil will make people deceive people because he's a deceiver uh, and make them uh, one, sin, when they sin against God, and two, make them submit themselves to him. This has always been the game of the devil. And you see this in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. You should really write down this scripture. The Bible says there, it said, to whom you yield yourself, servant, to obey his servant, you become. Let's look at it. To whom? Let's read that scripture together. 
Let me read from verse 14, first of all. He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Uh, 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So this is all that the devil does. He tricked people to obey him and fall into sin. And by that, they become subject. He possesses them. And the devil is a violent person. You saw what the Bible described there. He says his violence was found in him. He kills, he destroys, he murders. That's who the devil is. That's his work. So the same trick that he played on Adam and Eve, Eve in particular, you remember the story in Genesis chapter 3. So he played that trick on Eve. Did God say you should not eat of any tree? Oh, yeah, God said we should eat of all the trees except the tree in the middle of the garden. For the day we eat, we shall die. Is the devil said, you shall, not, you shall not surely die. And he lied. As always, tricked Eve. And you know the story. From that day, the devil had access to the lineage of Adam and Eve, which is why human beings are being dominated by the devil, by darkness, by evil all over the world. Until when they come to Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, hallelujah, the one whom through his death has destroyed the devil. And you see that in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the law of servitude. Uh, you also see that same law mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. And I will encourage you to read John chapter 8, verse 34 as well. It says, whoever commits sin is, of the, is, is a slave to sin. And you see young people grow up and they are taught righteousness and they hold on and uh, the devil will continue to put pressure on them from peers and all that and all that. I usually use the possession of drugs including alcohol to illustrate this. Some people know that certain, uh, 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 I mean, initially, certain drinks don't appeal. But how do you see that people haven't tasted those alcohol? They become addicted to it. They cannot stay without alcohol. There are spirits behind drug addiction and alcoholism, becoming alcoholic, and possession and addiction to any other sin. There are demons behind them. So the devil deceives people and then make them subject and then dominate them. But in whatever area the devil has dominated you, by Jesus Christ, you have been set free. Just know that today. If you come to Jesus, know that you have received the blessing of the deliverance, from the power of darkness and dominion over the devil, the Satan, and all his agents and all his activities. Law number two, I call it the law of provocation, the law of provocation. The devil provokes people to do things contrary to the will of God. Uh, that's one, the, the law of provocation has two elements provoking you to do things contrary to the will of God. And sometimes he provokes people against you. We must know these things because now we're going to go into how you then deal with these tricks of the devil. You have been delivered, brothers and sisters. You have been delivered through Jesus Christ. But the devil plays tricks in these two principles. Tricking people so he can dominate them and provoking people uh, so they can offend God or be weakened so he can then play out his scheme. So you see the, uh, the law of provocation happened in those two forms that I have told you about. The first one is you see the example of David. David was provoked by Satan to number Israel against the instruction of God. 
You see this in First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 1 through 3. If you go there, you see the Bible says Satan provoked, exact word, Satan provoked David to number Israel. And even when his general, Joab, came to him and said, Ah, king, don't do this so you don't bring a curse against Israel. He went on to do it. Do you know what happened? 70,000 people died. 70,000 men. 70,000 men died because of that madness of the king. Oh, let me send a word here to some ministers of God in Nigeria. There have been madness of the prophets in Nigeria. Hear me. There have been madness of the prophets in Nigeria that has brought untold evil and hardship to Nigerians. Today, I ask that you repent. Oh, you prophets of God that have been provoked by the devil to seek your own selfish interest, to seek your own glory rather than the glory of God that God has raised you up to fulfill. May you repent from that madness that the evil that have befallen this country may cease. In the name of Jesus, your ambition cannot be used uh, as the point to trade in Nigeria. All oh, you prophets, uh, repent. Repent like David. Repent today in the name of Jesus. So David, the Bible calls it the madness of the prophet. Because of this thing David did, destruction came upon Israel. 70,000 men died. This is how the devil does. He provokes people to do things contrary to the way and the will of God. So the devil can strike. The second part of the law of provocation is that the devil does not provoke you, the individual Christian. He provokes somebody else against you. Oh, how did Jesus die? The devil provoked Judas Iscariot to betray him. That's what happened. You may not have realized this, but look at Luke chapter 22, verse 3. I want us to read that. It said, Then Satan entered Judas, surname Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him. That's it. Betray him to them. So, how do you then deal with this? You have to, number one, remember you have been delivered. The devil does not have any authority, any power over you. But you have been delivered and you have been given the power and the authority over the devil and all his agents and all his works and his activities. That is the order of God. That's number one. Number two, you must then use the authority. Two scriptures, and then we will round off. You must use the authority to do your own duty. You see, the devil's duty is to destroy. Your own duty is to cast out the devil. This is where we fall short. You must continually cast out the devil anywhere you see the sign of the devil, cast him out. If you see the sign of the devil playing tricks of servitude to lure you into sin so he can dominate you, cast him out. You see the sign of the devil when you lie down to sleep and you begin to have funny dreams, wake up and cast him out. You have been given the power and the authority to cast him out. You are to cast out the devil continually. If you see somebody afflicted by sickness that is of the devil, cast him out. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. All those who were oppressed of the devil. He cast out the devil and healed the sick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
And when the devil instigates somebody against you, you must stand up and cast the devil out that is in him. Let's look at a few scriptures. So I've talked about number one, you must know who you are, your power, your, your, your authority, and your right. And number two, you must do your own duty, which is to cast out the devil. That's how you deal with the devil. You cast out the devil in any manifestation. Of course, number three, as you know, you are not to obey the devil. So there must be no sin. Don't go into sin. When we are talking about a blessing set number one, you remember, we said it is the devil rules over sin. So when the devil can get you to sin, he uses that to try to dominate you. But whatever it is, know that you can always come out. Come out to Jesus, confess your sin, and cast the devil out. Okay, let's look at a few scriptures, and then we'll bring this to a close. Of course, uh, you know the examples of Jesus, how he cast out the devil, the example of Paul, and the example of Peter, how they cast out devils. You can read that, uh, Jesus, Luke chapter 8, 30 to 33. And, and there are many more. And uh, uh, Peter, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Okay, let's look at some very key scriptures and then we'll close. I want us to read, uh, look at Luke chapter 10 again, 17 and 19, which we read before, because this is the scripture that gives you and me authority. So you must use this authority. In verse 17, he says that the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. You must know that. So when you tell that demon in the name of Jesus, get out. Know that he is bound to obey. He is bound to do what you have said. Verse 19, he said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Note there, it is enemy, one enemy. The enemy of God is Satan. Nobody else, nothing else is Satan whom God casts out of his presence. From the midst of the fiery stones, he cast him out, cut him off. Michael fought and drove him and his angels out of heaven, threw them to the earth. And the devil has come here to cause all forms of havoc and all forms of evil. And Jesus Christ came to stop the works of the devil and has raised us up to continue to cast out the devil and to terminate every work of the devil. So here the Bible says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, I give you the authority to trample on serpents. Plural, serpents. So all manifestations of the devil like serpents. And scorpions, all manifestations of the devil are scorpions. He said, I give you authority to trample over them. And then he added, and over all the power of their master, the power of the enemy, the enemy, that is the devil. And he said, and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. What are you afraid of? The devil cannot do you anything. Now that you have this knowledge, don't fall to his uh, trick of servitude. Don't fall to his trick of provocation. Maintain and do your own duty of casting the devil out anytime, anywhere. In John chapter 14, verse 30, you will see there, the Bible says, Jesus said, the prince of this world has come, but he has found nothing in me. He has nothing in me. I have no part with him. He has no part with me. You have no part with the devil. The devil has no part with you. Finally, let's look at Mark chapter 16. I know you would have been waiting. Say, up, won't you read Mark chapter 16? Oh, hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. You know there, Jesus gave us the right again to cast out the devil. Mark chapter 16. There the Bible says, 
from verse 15, he said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. In whom? In Jesus. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah. So you see there in verse 17, he says, in my name, they will cast out demons. Cast out demons. Cast them out. Every agent of the devil in your life and in your family, I cast that devil out. I cast that demon out. I, every activity and works of the devil Limiting your life, hindering your life, I command that works of the devil to perish right now in the name of Jesus. Limiting your life, limiting my life, I command that works of the devil to perish now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Finally, we are to resist the devil. Resist the devil. James chapter 4. Verse 7. All these that I've told us already are part of the ways of resisting the devil. But you know what resist means? You stand against. It means for you to be proactive. You don't wait. So this is not about coming to cast out the devil when you have seen his activities. This is for you to be conscious all the time. And resist the devil. Anywhere you go, know that the devil must not operate in that place. You are to take authority over every activity and works of the devil. Stand against the devil. James chapter 4, verse 7. That will be our last scripture because of time. We can go on this for a very long time. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I love that. Flee. So this is the one that puts him completely to flight. You resist and you have to practice it as a lifestyle. Anywhere you are, you re- the devil cannot operate. You have to be proactive using the authority in the name of Jesus. And of course, As I said, you must avoid sin and you must live a righteous life and continue to do the purpose and the will of God that God has sent you to this world to do. Let's bring it to a close here because uh, the time is fast spent. Thank you for listening. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that you have taught us. Thank you for exposing Satan and the devil and all his agents. Thank you for letting us know we have been delivered from darkness and from the kingdom of Satan. We have no part with the devil and the devil has no part with us. We have everything in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the love of God. The kingdom of the son of his love. We thank you, our father. We thank you for the blessing that you have poured upon us as your children. We say glory be to your holy name. Heavenly father, we thank you for the name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. And in that name, in the name of Jesus, I join my faith with all your children who have joined this program this morning, and everyone who is listening to me and those who will be listening to this broadcast, anywhere they may be, I cast out every devil that has hindered their life. I terminate every work of the devil in their life. I terminate every activity of the devil in the name of Jesus, by the authority in the name of Jesus. Devil, I cast you out. I cast you out of that man. I cast you out of that uh, uh, child. I cast you out of that woman. I terminate your works in the mighty name of Jesus. In our entire families, I resist you and all your work 
And I command every work of the devil to cease in the name of Jesus. First John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil that Jesus has destroyed, I command you, remain destroyed in our lives. You cannot afflict anyone here. Sickness, you are the work of the devil. You are hereby destroyed. Get out of that body by the stripes of Jesus. He or she was healed. We are healed. I therefore declare the healing virtue of Christ Jesus to flow through everyone hearing me now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.